Hello, church friends. My name is Mike Powers, and I would like to welcome you to our service today. Today is uh, an important day in the, the life of our church. We are welcoming two new pastors to our church family. Senior Pastor Andrea Kreischauer comes to us from the United Methodist Church in uh, Fort Dodge, where she's served as the, the lead pastor there for the, for the past nine years. And Pastor Andrea comes uh, along with a uh, husband, Joshua, and uh, two children, uh, Wesley and Gracie. So let's all welcome her uh, entire family to our church family. And uh, we certainly look forward to getting to know all of them uh, better going forward. And then also we have a new associate pastor, uh, Jordan Durhammer. And uh, Pastor Jordan has served as the, the lead pastor at the Alden United Methodist Church and also as an associate pastor at the, the Methodist Church in Iowa Falls. So, um, and I think I have this right. Uh, I understand that Pastor Jordan is the youngest pastor in the Iowa Annual Conference. So uh, we are honored to have her. That's quite a, a distinction. Uh, great to have her uh, as part of our, our our family as well. So look forward to uh Again, getting to know and uh, the welcoming, uh, welcoming both of uh, our new pastors, Pastor Andrea and Pastor Jordan. As you may know, it's a bit of a tradition in the, the United Methodist Church that the uh, first Sunday that a senior pastor uh, takes uh, you know, takes their their new role in, in a new church that uh, we give them a bit of a break uh, to to get their legs underneath them and uh, uh, get organized, if you will. And so consequently, we won't ask uh, uh, Pastor Andrea to uh, lead the service today. Uh, I will be uh, sharing the message with you all here in, in a little bit. And what that message is going to say is that uh, I uh, really believe that uh, Christ has a plan for our church. And he's blessed us with uh, an abundance of gifts that should give us the confidence to, to move forward boldly uh, under our new pastoral leadership to spread the good news of, of Jesus Christ, uh, not just within our church, but uh, beyond the, the church and into the community. So uh, really look forward to this exciting new chapter in the, in the life of our church uh, with both uh, Pastor Andrea and Pastor Jordan. And uh, I will also take note that it's the 4th of July. Uh, so I hope you all are uh, enjoying a you know, a very restful holiday weekend. Um, very happy that uh, you chose to uh, spend a little bit of uh, that weekend with us here uh, in our uh, online service. So with that, thank you. Uh, it's great to see you all again and uh, let us enter into a time of worship. <laughs>
Good morning, friends. I'm Miss Alice, and I'm so happy to be here with you. But I have my two friends with me. Lucy and, and Frankie. And we're going to talk about moving ahead with abundance. What's abundance mean? A big amount. Of A big amount. So if we move ahead with abundance, who gives us abundant things? God. OK, so we have some cars here. And we'll start. I'll start. And I'm going to name something that God has given me in an abundance. He's given me my friends. Water. Water. Uh, food. A house. Love. Love. Money. Money. Our church. Um, I still do friends. Uh -huh. Friends. Family. Harder. Food. Did we say food? All right, I'll say food again. One more time. Um, hmm. Did you say family? Life. Life. He's given us life. Buildings. Buildings. So God has given us many things abundantly. We have an overflow of things, and we're thankful for those things. I want you guys to think of some things that God has given you abundantly. Should we pray? Remember how we pray? I'll say some words and then you'll repeat after me, okay? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For all the things. For all the things. That you've given us. That you've given us. Abundantly. Abundantly. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. My name is Sam Pulowski, and I will be reading today's scripture. Today's scripture comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 23 through 31, in the New Revised Standard Version. The believers pray for boldness. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported that the chief priests and the elders had said to them, when they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and everything in them. It is you who said by the Holy Spirit, through our ancestor David, your servant. Why do the Gentiles rage, and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they had prayed, they placed in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. May God add God's blessing to the reading, hearing, and living of Scripture. Amen. I can tell you that I was very happy to be offered the chance to deliver the message on this day as we welcome Pastor Andrea and Pastor Jordan to our church family. But once that initial happiness started to subside, I started to worry and I thought to myself, what am I going to talk about? What could I say to appropriately mark this occasion of new pastoral leadership for our congregation? What could I say about this very tragic period that we've all been through? from which we're now emerging. So I prayed. And then a thought popped into my head. There was another time where people emerged from behind closed doors because of a dangerous situation, and they were equipped with new church leadership. Can that provide us with a model? I opened my Bible and I started looking through the book of Acts. As I was skimming through the pages, I was looking at the headings of the various sections of scripture and I came across one that said, and this was in the NRSV version, the believers pray for boldness. I paused on that 
and felt that, yes, this is also a time for boldness. That section is from Acts 24, 23 through 31, and is today's scripture. The word bold is an adjective with a range of meanings. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, bold can, be, can mean being fearless before danger, but it can also mean being impudent and presumptuous. Bold cliffs are sheer and steep. A bold thinker is adventurous and free. Bold lettering stands out prominently. Maybe we don't need to be impudent and presumptuous, but the rest of it, that seems pretty on target. We definitely need to stand out and connect with the community outside the walls of our church building. As Jesus advised in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5.14, we need to be the light of the world and a city built on a hill that cannot be hid. We need to be bold. Let's look at the kind of boldness that today's passage from Acts is talking about. To understand it better, we need some context. Prior to the Pentecost, the disciples were in hiding and fearful that they might meet the same fate that Jesus had suffered. And then suddenly there came a sound from heaven that swept through the building like a violent wind and tongues of fire rested on each of them. The disciples led by Peter were so energized by this and equipped with the ability to speak in foreign tongues and cure the sick, they immediately went out into the public and began converting a large number of people. Our story, however, picks up sometime later in Acts 3. When Peter and John were going to the temple to pray, and a man, lame from birth, was carried in, as he was every day, to beg for alms. The lame man asked Peter and John for a handout, but Peter told him that he had no money for him, but commanded the man, in the name of Jesus Christ, to stand up and walk. The lame man jumped up with joy and walked into the temple, praising God in full view of the people gathered there, who all recognized him as the lame man who begged for money every day. The people who witnessed this miracle were astonished at what had happened and gathered around Peter and John. Peter addressed the crowd and told them that this man was healed by the power of Jesus Christ, whom they had killed. Peter told them that he knew that the crowd and their rulers had acted in ignorance, but that forgiveness was available to them if they repented and turned to God. On that day, 5,000 people joined the church. This so annoyed the leaders of the temple that they had Peter and John arrested and placed into custody. The leaders recognized Peter and John as having been companions of Jesus, and they were alarmed by the striking demonstration of power provided by the healing of the lame man. The leaders ordered Peter and John not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus any further. But both men boldly refused, saying in Acts 3, 19 through 20, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge, for we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, the authorities released the two men, for they were unable to punish them because so many people had seen the good that Peter and John had done in Jesus' name. That takes us to today's scripture, in which Peter and John, following their release from jail, relay their story to the believers. In doing so, they paraphrase the words of David in the first two verses of Psalm 2, which foretold of the opposition to the Lord by the kings and non-believers of the earth. They also note, consistent with David's prediction, that both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with many people in Israel, punished Jesus in accordance with God's predestined plan. In view of the opposition of such powerful people, they prayed for the strength to speak the word of God with all boldness. All who had gathered were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with that boldness. You know, I've been thinking about times in my life when I acted boldly, and certainly there was nothing to compare to what uh, the early disciples were, just, were facing. But since we've been married, Libby and I have moved for employment opportunities from St. Louis to Cincinnati to Chicago to Des Moines. And with each move, we didn't really know anyone in the cities we were moving to. We were stepping out into the unknown. As it turned out, with each move, we ended up loving our new location and the new friends that we had made. 
If we had not taken a risk and taken a leap into the unknown, we would have missed out on a lot of enriching experiences, including being here with you today. I think Pastor Andrea and Pastor Jordan have already acted boldly in making the decision to move here. They are stepping out boldly into the unknown. They could have stayed where they were, but they made the choice to uproot and be with us. We owe them much thanks for that, and we should strive to do what we can to make their jobs easier. So what was it about Peter and John that enabled them to, to act so boldly in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ? Of course, they were empowered by the Holy Spirit, but what was it that the Holy Spirit gave them that drove them so fiercely? How did they do such a, a total 180 degree turn from hiding behind closed doors, afraid that they would be arrested, to boldly going out in public in a very, very noticeable way to preach about Jesus. I think what the Holy Spirit gave the early disciples was the confidence that comes with knowing that they were backed by all of the abundant power of Jesus Christ. You could say that they adopted a mindset of abundance. There's a Buddhist saying that the mind is everything, what you think you become. And I think that is true. For example, a study of middle-aged people conducted by Yale and Miami universities showed that those with positive beliefs about aging lived seven and a half years longer than those with self less positive self-perceptions of aging. Another study showed that children who believe that intelligence can be developed were more able to overcome academic challenges than those who thought that intelligence was predetermined. Stephen Covey coined the phrase abundant mindset in his 1989 bestseller, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He defined the term to mean having a feeling that there were enough resources and successes to share with others, as opposed to a scarcity mindset, which is founded on the belief that if someone else wins, you will lose. If you approach life from the perspective of abundance rather than scarcity, if you see the glass is half full and not half empty, if you search for what's good rather than fear what is bad, then you will be happier, healthier, and I think good things will come into your life. Another time that I feel where I acted boldly and benefited from it was in traveling to impoverished countries in Latin America on four separate mission trips. I was uncertain what difficulties our group of Americans would encounter, but in every case, we met folks who personified an abundant mindset. Despite living in what we would describe as impoverished conditions, the people we met did not dwell on that or complain. Instead, they focused on what they had and what was within their power to control and plowed ahead trying to make their lives and their communities better. They did not resent the advantages with which our group had been blessed. Instead, they tried to learn from us as to what we found successful at our church. We, in turn, were also eager to learn from them. And to be honest, we ended up learning that they had a much better grasp on what is really important in life than we did. In today's scripture, I think that Peter and Paul felt emboldened to speak and act so publicly in support of Jesus' teaching is that the Holy Spirit had transformed them from being timid and afraid to realizing that what Jesus had called them to do, what Jesus calls all of us to do, equipped them with a great wealth of capabilities. As Paul commented in Romans 8, 31b, if God is for us, who is against us? Someone once asked me what I thought was the strongest argument as proof of Jesus' resurrection. And I said, I thought it was the actions of the disciples following the Pentecost. It is a historical fact that this small group of relatively uneducated men spread to the far corners of the earth and were willing to die excruciating deaths as martyrs just to spread the story of Jesus. The movement that they fostered now encompasses over 2 billion people today. There had to be something unquestionably real and extremely powerful to equip and drive people to such lengths. So back to how this message came together. I thought to myself, the Holy Spirit led me to speak about boldness and how a mindset of abundance was a precursor to acting boldly. I thought to myself, yeah, I see where this is going. I had an A for abundance, 
in a B for boldness. The Holy Spirit must be leading me to come up with something like the ABCs of discipleship. I then began to think, well, what word starts with C that the Holy Spirit would want me to use? Could it be creativity, compassion, community, communion, collaboration, communication, conscience, consistency, constancy, charisma, care? All good words, but they just didn't seem to fit. And then I thought about all the things I would have to leave aside if I had just stuck to a word that started with C. Words such as love, forgiveness, servitude, humility, sacrifice, sharing, peace, reconciliation, trust, faith, salvation, and grace. It seemed that not including those ideas would be a big miss. And then it hit me. What word covers all of the words I just mentioned? Christ, of course. With Christ in our hearts, we are fortified with abundance, giving us the confidence to act boldly. But therein lies the twist. The C does not come at the end, but instead comes at the beginning. Everything begins with Christ. Instead of ABC, we have CAB, so none of the letters are in the spot where I thought they would end up, which, if you think about it, is sort of like life. Just like I did with this message, I started out not knowing where I was going, and the Holy Spirit pointed me down a path. When I thought I had it figured out, I thought I was looking for an ending, but actually found a beginning. The moral of the story is that you can never go wrong if you put Christ first. So what do we as a congregation do now? We know we have challenges ahead of us. We know we need to attract new members in a world that is at times seemingly indifferent at best and hostile at worst to religion. But the world is not more hostile than what the disciples faced. And we too have Christ on our side. We may not be able to cure the sick, but Christ has equipped us with abundant tools including a collective attitude of servitude, which is manifested in our mission activities, a generous and welcoming spirit, and a faith in God to do his work. Christ has a plan for us and has placed two talented pastors here to lead us. But we just can't sit back and wait for our new pastors to perform miracles. God has a role for all of us. Each of us must do our part. So let's all be bold together. Let us all be willing to try new things, bold things. Going in, we recognize that some of the things that we will try will work, and that will be great. But that other things we will try won't work, but we will learn from those things, and that will move us forward also. We all may find some aspects of change unsettling, and I understand that. But let us all take comfort that there is something that must not change and will not change. And that is following Christ's commands to love God and to love our neighbor. As long as we stay true to that, we will always be on the right path. Amen. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together today. As a pa pandemic comes to an end and we start to go out more, we have to make sure we still have time for you. Although our lives are becoming busy again, we still need to take time to pray and reflect. As we start this new chapter with new pastors and virtual church, we have to keep you at the center of it. We can once again go out and boldly proclaim your word and use our, your teachings to help the, those around us. Be with us this week as we go to work and other activities and celebrate the 4th of July. And now please join me in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Ken Ferguson and I'm a member of the State Fair Council and it's that time of year again. The fair's coming. We've uh, met with the fair board and they're having expecting the biggest fair they've ever had. Uh, it, <clears throat> very excited about it. So we need people to come and sign up on our website on Sign Up Genius. Sign up whatever shift or more shifts that you can work. If you can't use the uh, the Sign Up Genius, we'll have a sign up board in the friendship room here at the church. Come and join us and have a great time. It's a great, great way to meet people and forward our mission projects throughout the church and throughout the year. We'll see you there. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this time with us today. Once again, we extend a, a warm welcome to Pastor Andrea and Pastor Jordan and look forward to their pastoral leadership. This is the beginning of a new and exciting chapter for our church. Christ has a plan for us. He has blessed us with abundance and expects us to act with boldness, to be that city on the hill that cannot be hid. Change can be exciting, but at the same time unsettling. However, our constant will always be loving God and loving our neighbor, and that should be comforting to all of us. So let's go forward with these words in our hearts. Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thank you that we can live in your light and walk in your truth. Move us through the Holy Spirit to think generously with an abundant mindset and to act boldly in demonstrating what it means to love you and our neighbors. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.